Hey everyone, it's time to retune all of your ears with alternate tuning systems. Alright, so you guys are all familiar with the concept of pitch. There's low notes and high notes and stuff like that. And there's a problem. How do you, how do you develop the idea of harmony? How do you, at the most core level, say what's harmonic and what's not? Well, it's math. So here are a couple of uh, ratios of fundamental consonants, or that's harmonic. Uh, there's the octave, which is the building block of all harmony, and that's a two to one ratio. Now to give you guys a better idea of that, all sound is is a bunch of mechanical vibrations through air. Uh, I'll just represent it here by a bunch of sine waves. So say the green sine wave is a lower pitch because the wavelength's longer, and the red sine wave is higher pitch because the wavelength is shorter. And if you notice here, it's a perfect octave because the lower uh, note oscillates two times, and while the no, 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 sorry. The low note oscillates once in the same time it takes the higher note to oscillate twice. That's, that creates that harmonic building block. But there's an inherent problem. Because of that two to one ratio, everything compounds upon itself. So sound is actually exponential. And uh, this is a nice little graph of the exponential curve of sound. But if sound is exponential, then why does... Oh, sorry. This is why the, um, the uh, frets on the guitar get smaller and smaller. That's the exponential nature of pitch. Okay, now that that's through. Okay, so on the piano, why does the distance between, say, C to E sound the same as F to A? Why does that pitch distance sound the same, even though it's exponential and curved? It's because of something called 12-tone equal temperament. Essentially what they did was they took the octave back in the 1500s and they split it into 12 ugly, disgusting, filthy pieces. <laughs> now with 12-tet, the two represents the octave because you're splitting that up into 12 pieces. And so if you go up 12 notes, so two to the 12th power, you get two, so that's times two, and that's the octave. Now, what this rep ratio represents is it's the smallest half step within your 12 tone system. So, a perfect fifth in 12 tet is actually 12 root 2 to the 7th power, which ends up in this gigantic decimal. But wait, a perfect fifth is a 3 to 2 ratio, and that's 1.5. Well, everything you know is a lie. <laughs> Everything you've ever known is a lie, from prehistoric music times of the Baroque to the iTunes music you buy in the store today. Everything is inherently flawed and a lie and based on just oh, a system of conspiracy that's been trapping you. It's this disgusting dictator, and it's been controlling your life. It's been controlling everything you've ever listened to. I don't know about you, but I spent 10 years playing piano with Asian teachers behind my back with rulers in their hands. <laughs> and it didn't sound right to me, but I, I didn't have the right to question that. They just stared me down with their rulers. No, this is what you play. You play this. This is right. This is music theory. This is Bach. This is Beethoven. This is perfect. And it was just one big lie. And the moment I found out that all my fears had been realized, that I really had been lied to all those 10 years, I, I had enough. I did what any person would do. I declared war. <laughs> I declared war on the bane that is 12-tone equal temperament. Now, my fight did not start off very well, and I s sadly started with the S word, statistics. It's so bad I wrote it in Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wasted about 150 hours on stupid statistics, wandering around, just splitting up octaves into a billion pieces, one piece, two piece, and it got me nowhere. And I realized what I needed was pure math. Pure math at the most core, fundamental level. But in the process, I discovered that no one had really defined music with math before. 
and no one had really written out the fundamental laws or postulates, as you would call them, for music as math. And so I found myself carving out my own path and not really knowing what I was doing. But after a long, long struggle down this path, I realized that um, the power was within me. And I had to create those fundamental postulates myself. I had to become that bridge between math and music because no one else would be that bridge for me. And long story short, I was able to isolate the entire error of a tuning system through a really, 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 really long mathematic proof that probably contains too much music for you math people out there and too much math for you music people out there. And all the error within a tuning system can be compressed into one number known as a comma. And from this, the magic number was discovered. 19. 19. 19. You split up an octave into 19 pieces. And error is pretty much so small that no one can even hear it. So this is a comparison of 12-tone equal temperament to 19-tone equal temperament. Now, the, uh, the comma within 12-tone equal temperament is known as the Pythagorean comma. It's that really long, ugly decimal there. And I calculated what I call the Siegel comma. Uh, I mean, at first I thought I discovered the number, but then the other day I was on Google and I found out that the number had actually been discovered by some random guy in Hungary in the 70s. It was incredibly disappointing. But, okay, back to the Siegel comma. The Siegel comma is about, since pitch compounds upon itself, it's eight times smaller than the Pythagorean comma. In other words, the entire keyboard you know today has more error than less than a tiny octave, a piece of an octave of 19 tone equal temperament. That's huge. I don't know about you, but that's huge. Like, that's smaller than like, if you heard that ratio, the Siegel comma, you couldn't even tell it was t two different notes. And for you music theory nerds out there, it's an entire planet of new harmony. You have a third set of keys above. You have, there's no such thing as enharmonic anymore. F sharp and uh, G flat are now two separate notes. And you have to add two extra black keys between the empty spaces on a keyboard. But the point is, it's an entirely new world of harmony that your ears have never heard before. It's huge. It's beyond what that evil dictator had taught you. And the point is, you can't trust authority as a source of information. The knowledge has to come from yourself. It doesn't matter how many uh, evil Asian teachers with rulers are behind you or uh, how well established it is. You can fight it. You have to get the knowledge from yourself. And don't limit yourself to these, to these categories. Oh, music is just music. Math is just math. Science is just science. There's always gray areas. You have to be that bridge yourself. And if your bridge collapses, then you just haven't dug deep enough. So you just need to dig for victory. And sing your voice out loud, just don't sing in 12-tone equal temperament. <laughs> if you want to see the actual mathematical proof, you can go to my blog. That's kirklandloud.blogspot.com. Thank you.